Hi, it's Gene, retired in Mexico, and we ask one question on this channel, which is, do they write them and sing them like they used to? Now, a lot of people, young and old, they think the old music is better, but I'm not so sure. And today, we're going to continue our series of counting down my 30 favorite albums from the year 2001. Today, in part two, we'll count down albums 15 through 1. So what are they going to be? All right. So here we go. I've got my uh, spreadsheet corrected now, so I won't make the same mistake as I made in part one, where I got off a little bit. Sorry. I am human. Uh, number 15. And again, uh, before I start, let me say I am sorry about having to record outdoors. I have a dead webcam. I'm getting a replacement. In the meantime, I've got to film outdoors for the uh, ambient light and that means I get the ambient sound. So you're gonna hear cars, there's a guy playing clarinet down the street, if you can believe it. And I noticed on part one, I, if you listen really carefully, you can hear clarinet music. So, oh well, what can I do? But anyway, coming in at number 15, a band from Buffalo, New York, Mercury Rev, All Is Dream. And my favorite album by them is probably Deserter's Songs which is from the 90s, but I love All His Dream, and uh, the first track is so Neil Young influenced. Uh, it's pretty much a ripoff of After the Gold Rush, but then they get more original on the album, and man, I just love this. Uh, you know, they're often compared to the Flaming Lips, and Mercury Rev, great band, uh, love his, uh, I guess you would call it a falsetto, and uh, just really uh, good sort of psychedelic rock music, uh, All Is Dream by Mercury Rev. Coming in at number 14 from Melbourne, Australia, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, No More Shall We Part. This album has a real mix of uh, serious songs and kind of dark songs all put into one album. Uh, there are some straight ahead love songs and there are, then there are songs like 15 Feet of Snow and which he's terrified by the amount of snow that's outside. Just pure white snow everywhere. Uh, he's freaking out. <laughs> it's great. And then God is in the house which is a portrait of a town where nobody sins. And uh, just really good dark stuff and light stuff from good old Nick Cave love love this album uh, coming in at number 13 from Louisville Kentucky we have my morning jacket and their second album at dawn uh, this is not my favorite album but it's a really strong one and lots of great musicianship on this album if you're familiar with the band they're great players uh, great band great drumming bass everything guitar and Jim James vocals knock it out of the park and their songs are always interesting so number 13 my morning jacket at dawn coming in at number 12 is one of three no four anthologies so I've mentioned before I do compilations on here and I think that's part of it so uh, here is a artist that I kind of prefer his singles versus his albums and this is the best of Morrissey and I had the great delight to see him one time in concert. Uh, Morrissey so friggin funny I just love his lyrics and this is it this is it I mean songs like every day is like Sunday and every great Morrissey song is on here there's been a, a number of anthologies of his music but this is my favorite. This has uh, the best collection of songs. So number 12, Morrissey from the Smiths, the best of Morrissey. Number 11, another anthology. And uh, well, I make no apologies for this. This is a great two record set. The Bee Gees, their greatest hits, the record. And this covers their whole career from when they were pre-disco to the disco period. And I really enjoy the best tracks by the Bee Gees. Uh, I can't think of a single album of theirs that, that I really love all the way through. But man, when you take their best songs from 1941, 
Mining Disaster all the way through songs like Stayin' Alive. It's just a great uh, little run through of their history. And I do enjoy the Bee Gees. From, uh, they're from Australia, so we got our second Australian band on here. And really love, love the Bee Gees, no apologies. So the greatest, their greatest hits, the record coming in at number 11. Now we're into the top 10. So what's it going to be? Uh, number 10 is an Americana album that I really love, and I also had the chance to see her in concert. This is Gillian Welch, Time, The Revelator. And man, this is a, a, a dark album. If there's any criticism of this album, it's that a lot of the songs are the same tempo, and there's some similarity, but uh, great songs uh, and some songs about history so there's uh, there's a song uh, April 14th um, apparently the Titanic sank and Abraham Lincoln was assassinated both on April 14th and then she talks about a concert that she saw on that day and she weaves them all into this one narrative and then there's a song about uh, dreaming about the day Elvis Presley died and just really, really great songs. David Rawlings is her musical partner and they sing beautiful harmonies together and he's a great guitar and banjo player. So number 10, Gillian Welch, Time, The Revelator. Great album if you haven't heard it. Coming in number nine is a debut album. Uh, I've mentioned before I'm not a huge fan of Britpop but when Blur broke up and formed Gorillaz, I love the first Gorillaz album. It's not a perfect album, but it's got so many great tracks like Clint Eastwood on it, and uh, you've got all that reggae influence and some kind of punkier songs. And yeah, the first al album, uh, self-titled, simply called Gorillaz, was a great introduction, and I love this band. One of my probably 20 favorite bands or artists of the 21st century. Gorillas. Um, I don't know. This this seems like a great stoner album to me. Every time I listen to it, I think, "Wow, like uh, this must sound great high." I um, let's see. When did I quit doing weed? I quit doing weed before this album was released. So I'm just going to have to imagine what it sounds like. But Gorillas. By the way, I think old people should not do weed. But anyway, that's my opinion. <laughs> Number eight is another anthology. And this one goes back before I was born. This is Lady Day, the best of Billie Holiday. So that particular year, they put out this massive box set. It was like 12 or 13 CDs or some ridiculous amount. Uh, more Billie Holiday than I could ever listen to. But the same year, they put out this two CD distillation of her music. And what can you say about Billie Holiday? I think most people are at least somewhat familiar with her. And she, she changed vocal phrasing. Uh, people did not sing the same. Standards were not done the same. I mean, Frank Sinatra owes a huge debt to Billie Holiday in her phrasing. And she influenced so many people, and I love her music. And this is classic, classic early vocal jazz. Lady Day, The Best of Billie Holiday, all her great songs, All of Me, and God Bless the Child, and uh, Strange Fruit, and all her best songs are on this collection. Coming in at number seven, another Americana artist, Lucinda Williams. I love her. She's one of my favorite artists, and this is her album called Essence. And this received uh, four stars on All Music and was just, um, uh, I think, is underrated, actually. Uh, most people, their favorite album is Car Wheels on a Gravel Road. Um, and, and that might be my favorite, but Essence is really a strong, strong disc. Uh, not sure if you're familiar, how many of you are familiar with Lucinda Williams, but she's just a great singer and always has a great band and top-notch Americana artist. I love, love, love Lucinda Williams. Coming in number six, The White Stripes, White Blood Cells. And this is one of my two favorite, possibly my favorite album by them. I like Elephant quite a bit too. 
but uh, White Blood Cells, this, this might be their best album. It's their second, uh, not counting the EP that they put out. It's their f second full-length album. And what can I tell you about the White Stripes that you don't know? Probably nothing. I think they're such a well-known band, and they influence so much music in the 21st century. And, of course, I love the roots rock approach but also making it sound modern and in the 21st century. So Jack White, I'm a huge fan of his. Great guitar playing, great singing, and great compositions. He's a great songwriter. So many good tracks on here. Um, yeah, White Blood Cells by the White Stripes. Coming in at number five now, we're down to the top five. I have my favorite anthology uh, compilation of this list and that is Joe Jackson stepping out the very best of Joe Jackson big fan of his music did get did get a chance to see him one time in the 80s and a great performer great uh, musician classically trained and anyway stepping out the very best of Joe Jackson it starts with his uh, new wave material and then goes into his jazzy phases and his sort of Cole Porter phase and and then some of his more modern numbers and they lean heavily towards the early period and then they just sort of cherry pick the best songs from later in his career so it's a perfect anthology and they actually put out an album in 1990 with the same title uh, stepping out uh, with a different album cover and then decided to re-release it in 2001 with additional remastered tracks and whew, Joe Jackson, just love him, one of the great new wave artists, and then of course he was so versatile. And uh, by the way, Graham Maybe, who is his bass player, one of the most underrated bass players in rock history. People don't talk about him when they talk about the 100 greatest bass players, but check out a song like, you, you, uh, you can't get what you want till you know what you want. And just listen to the bass on that. It slaps. It's so good. All right, my top four No More Anthologies. These are all albums recorded in 2000 or 2001. And number four, you guys know I love this band, Radiohead Amnesiac. I think this is a great album. Uh, some people liked uh, the previous album, Kid A, a little more, but I think Amnesiac is a near equal and uh, love this album. I can't tell you anything about Radiohead that you don't already know. Uh, wonderful, wonderful album. I love every track on here and I think it's beautifully produced and beautifully sung and has all those uh, dark lyrics. Just love Radiohead, Amnesiac. Coming in at number three, a veteran. And he really pulled an ace out of his sleeve in 2001. Bob Dylan, Love and Theft. This is probably the last great album that Bob Dylan made. He's made several good albums in the 21st century, but Love and Theft is just a masterpiece all the way through. Uh, songs like Mississippi, just wonderful. And I love this, uh, you know, I'm a huge Dylan fan. Always have been, and this was just uh, well played. It wasn't um, a lot of covers on here. Uh, not too many originals, but you know the band just cracks. You have people like uh, w uh, what's his name from Texas? The um, man, I just spaced out his name. Um, anyway, one of the great guitar slingers from uh, Austin, Texas, is on here. Charlie Sexton. That's it. Charlie Sexton is uh, on this album. And boy, I'll tell you, the playing is just top notch on here. So, Love and Theft number three by Bob Dylan. Coming in at number two, uh, oops, sorry about that. So the, uh, I'm getting a message here uh, on my laptop, sorry about that. But number two from Alabama, though they claim to be from Athens, Georgia, but they're really Alabamans. And this is Drive By Truckers Southern Rock Opera, which is a double concept CD about the duality of the southern thing and boy these guys have a good pedigree because there's two two guys in the band Mike Cooley and Patterson Hood 
that are the singers and songwriters and like I say this is a concept album. Uh, Patterson Hood's father was David Hood who was the bass player for the Muscle Shoals house studio band and he played on songs like uh, Etta James' I'd Rather Go Blind and Paul Simon's Kodachrome just to name a couple and then he had this son Patterson Hood who's really literate and it's really a great so for example there's a song on here called Ronnie and Neil and it's about Ronnie Van Zant of Leonard Skinner and Neil Young and they had a uh, rivalry in song he uh, Neil Young had written a song called Alabama and another one called Southern Man and then Leonard Skinner answered that with Sweet Home Alabama and then Drive By Truckers they write a song about that rivalry. I mean, this is just such a cool album. I, I, I love it, and it's uh, about a pretend band, and then the band goes down in an airplane crash, just like Leonard Skinner did. And there's actually a song called Angels and Fuselage. And what a great closer that is. It uh, actually is a first-person narrative about what it would be like to go down in a plane and then there's a song called The Three Great Alabama Icons about George Wallace and Bear Bryant and Ronnie Van Zant and just uh, terrific stuff. If you, if you haven't checked out this album, this is my favorite album by Drive-By Truckers. Okay, number one, what's it going to be? And for those of you who have watched the channel, you might guess, but my number one album of the year 2001 is Bjork. Vespertine. This is such a unique album and it's sung from a deeply feminine uh, point of view. It, uh, every time I finish listening to this album I feel in touch with my femininity. You know she and Joni Mitchell are two artists that make me really understand what it's like to be a woman as best I can and Vespertine is also sonically brilliant with its harps and music boxes and it's a weird album, but it's weird and really cool, it, you know, weird in a cool fashion. And uh, you, you probably know this album, but songs like Cocoon and Pagan Poetry and uh, Wow. And, you know, she's a little psycho on this album, too, when she sings, I love him, I love him, I love him, I love him, and she repeats that over and over again. I'm like, whoa, you know. So... <laughs> She's not afraid to be a little bit crazy, too. Bjork, uh, wow, what can I say about Bjork? She's just a great, great 21st century artist, and Vespertine is such an intimate album with some whispering and quiet parts, and she just draws you in, pulls you into this album, and it's a whole little secret world that Bjork invites you to, and. I love it. So that's it. That's my countdown 15 to 1. Let me know what you think. I'm always interested in your comments. They're really fun to read. And if you like what we're doing here on the channel, hit that like or subscribe button. And as we say here in Mexico, buen dia.